Hello, Debbie. How and, are you? Oh, man, just busy as ever. Well, that's good news in this environment, you know, the past year. That, that's really good news. So we want to welcome you and thank you. Um, we are streaming into our community right now. There's over a thousand people in our community. And awesome. then tomorrow and this upcoming week, we will be emailing this clip of the interview. And so people can see you, they can listen to your interview again, they can, uh, they'll can they find your contact information. So we, uh, in total, up to about 10,000 people uh, will be getting your information out to them. So thank you for joining us. Sounds awesome. Thanks for having me. So I, um, I believe that I met uh, I don't, you or someone from your company at Dave Asprey's um, Bulletproof Conference in maybe Pasadena? Yeah, Pasadena. That was me. Yeah. And I, our people are very in tune to measuring and collecting data. Yep. And so we have our auras and our garments and our, and so what intrigues me is that you're going to help us organize it and put it into one place. Among other things. Yes. So could you share about your company and how we can make technology better, make it easier, usable, user-friendly, just anything you can help us so that we can look at it as we've been looking at technology for our clients and um, bringing this on is something we do, but the other people that we're introducing you to, I want them to know how they could use your product as well. Yeah, so there's a couple ways to think about what's happening within the healthcare industry at large. And, and the first trend is the incredibly sophisticated technology that's available to the average individual. Continuous glucose monitors, Apple watches, aura rings, scales, glucometers. And this technology is incredibly precise. Mm -hmm. And anyone actually can pull up a graph of their blood sugar and their heart rate over the last three hours, measured every five minutes right on their phone. Doctors don't even have access to this level of sophisticated data. On, on an, so we as individuals now have access to this incredible biofeedback, and that helps us learn about our bodies, and it helps us learn what's working and what's not working. Feedback. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is giving us biofeedback. So these sensors and technologies are accelerating at an extremely rapid pace. So that, that trend is continuing. The challenge is that we have one device to measure this and one device to measure that. And so that's part A. And then part B, when I was working on this problem was, okay, that's awesome. I've made all these healthy changes. I've got my blood sugar dialed in. I'm sleeping better. My HRV is better. All this stuff's better. If I go to the doctor and they run my blood work, are the numbers actually better or not? You know, there's this great quote from a friend of mine, Dave, Dave Feldman. He's like, I don't care what you eat. You don't have to convince me. You just have to convince your blood work. So <laughs> it's true. It's like, okay, I did all this stuff, right? Did the hemoglobin A1C come down? Did the inflammatory markers come down? Did my thyroid numbers get better? That's really kind of the, the, the proof in the pudding. And so what our system does is it says, hey, I want to use these two or three devices to measure these. And I want to get my blood work done. And I want to use this longitudinally over weeks, months, and honestly, years. I want to look back over five years at the trend in my heart rate variability. And for people who are on this listening, if they're already measuring, that means they're already connected and they're, the numbers are going to get better because you're just actively connected to this feedback and you're listening to seminars like this and you're learning, that's going to make the numbers get better. And that's, to me, ultimately longevity. Longevity is starting today and it's it's the changes you're making today that are gonna that are gonna help you 30 years from now. Mm -hmm. And so what we've done is just basically built a system of record so that you could put all this stuff together and you don't have to go write scripts in a spreadsheet and macros and things like that to just say, okay, did my HRV get better or worse this year compared to last year? That's a simple thing you should be able to pull up. Or did my blood sugar get better this month versus last month when I made a, a, a change? These are simple questions. 
but I didn't see the technology existing that could give us simple answers. The only people I saw getting answers were the engineers who could write their own software to, to tease out this type of thing. And that's yeah. just not accessible to, to everybody. So you can think of us as just a health dashboard that lets you measure whatever you want. We have cancer patients, we have Tour de France athletes, everybody's measuring different things. But one place to actually have your, your, your data and your dashboard just the way you like it to self-manage. That's, that's what our company provides. I want to make sure that people understood it's not only the, the programs like the Keto Mojo and the Aura that, you, that you're allowing us to put into it, our personalized dashboard, that's right. but you could also have your blood work pushed over into the dashboard and, and really do a total health care management. Yeah, you know, so there's, be, there's so, some people don't want to track the blood work in our system. Yeah. That's totally fine. It's sensitive data. You know, keep that wherever you want. Some people do. Some yeah. people don't, don't use any of the devices. They just want to track their labs. Some people do both. That's totally up to you what features you use. But I'll just give you an example. My dashboard for my health. Okay. I have my Aura Ring, I have my Dexcom, I have my Apple Watch. That's pretty much like my top three that I use every single day. And I'm like, I want these three metrics from the Aura Ring. I want these two from the watch. I want this from the CGM. And those are the numbers I use on a day-to-day -day basis to calibrate my health. So you could have a Fitbit, you could have a Garmin, you could have a bio strap, you could have... We're pretty much agnostic. We just allow you to connect them all. Keto Mojo, for example, I have one of those too. Because even with the CGM, you're still calibrating with a finger stick. So you just pick what you want to measure. You pick your devices and then off you go. And we give you the, the charts and the graphs and the reports to self-manage. Yeah, that's very cool. And um, I am assuming that very user-friendly to set up. Yeah, uh, our, our typical user is 45 to 65 years of age. If you can get an iPhone up and running, you can get our system up and running. If okay. you got your Aura Ring connected, you can get, and anybody can do that. You know, the cool thing about this technology is these companies are building these user experiences to be as simple as possible. Mm -hmm. And so they want to sell 5 million rings. They It's got to be as easy as possible to get this out of the box and get up and running. So you have these companies building this technology for everyday people, medical grade technology, the user experiences are amazing. So it, it's not hard at all. You just connect it up and, and off you go. Mm -hmm. I love it. Um, are there, are there any tips or strategies that our client is going to be that 40, 45 year old woman plus that, um, some of these technologies are new. We didn't do yeah. this in the eighties in fitness and now they're here and they're using them. But um, do you feel that the dashboard would help with over overwhelm or the numbers to check on? I'm just trying to assure them that we could put this in a place that yep. makes it easier to, like you said, just take the top three you want to follow or, you know, I just looking for tips and strategies like that for them. I think it's always good to start small and just start measuring one or two things that you're comfortable with, blood sugar, for example. And what I've noticed is that it's kind of a journey that everybody goes on where they kind of come in and they have a starting point, typically some acute problem that they're working on. Mm -hmm. And let's say it's dysfunctional blood sugar control, for example. And so you get the diet all, all figured out and you, and you start figuring out how to control your blood sugar through diet and lifestyle. And then you're like, okay, what can I work on next? And you're like, oh, okay, I want to go optimize my sleeping next. And then they say, well, next I want to work on this aspect of my health, my, my uh, body composition. So I think it's always easiest just to start small and build up over time. And I think the things you're measuring also change over time. And what you're measuring changes as your health evolves. So I don't necessarily need to measure my carbohydrate intake anymore with an app like MyFitnessPal. It's intuitive. And now I'm focused on, on other things that are related more to like heart rate variability and respiratory rate. So as your health evolves and your knowledge evolves, the things you measure are going to change. I don't track my weight and my body fat anymore at all. 
I actually found it to be probably the two most misleading things out there. So I don't measure those anymore. But at the beginning, I did because I was coming off of the standard American diet. So mm -hmm. I think what you measure changes all the time as well as your knowledge and your, your journey changes. So that's how I would approach it. And, and there's times where I'm not measuring anything for a couple months because mm -hmm. life gets in the way. Mm -hmm. Cool. I can jump back in any time and just see where I left off. So mm -hmm. having a place where you can say, okay, I'm ready to pick it up again. And, and your numbers are right there where you left it. That's kind of how I see this technology being used. Uh, did you design the uh, Heads Up Health technology? Yeah, I I, uh, I was um, using a spreadsheet for this. <laughs> like many people listening to this, I'm sure. It's like anybody who's working on their health, it's like, gosh, I can't even log into my doctor's portal and see a trend in my blood work. Like not even a graph of all my readings. That's how pathetic some of these systems are. So I was using a spreadsheet that I built. And I would just plug the numbers in myself just so I could see them all on a row. Yeah. Like, that's how low the bar is, honestly, out there right now. Yeah. So I was just doing this in a spreadsheet. And I'm not a medical person at all. I'm more of a technology person. But as soon as I could see all the numbers in a row going back five years, then it became fun. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. I can see what numbers I got to work on. And, and by the way, here's a trend that's been going in the wrong direction for 10 years that that no doctor has even noticed because they don't have the information visible this way. So I started with a spreadsheet and I was working with a functional medicine doctor in Texas. I was living in California. So we would get on Skype and I'd share the screen with my spreadsheet and he'd give me my protocol for three months. I'd go rerun my labs and then we'd look at the numbers together and it got really fun. And um, it got me as a lay person involved in this much more than I would have otherwise been. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of it, I'm like, okay, well, just going to build an app to do this. It became something of a side project for me, a passion project and uh, released it and uh, just put it out there for free for who, whoever wanted it. And it kind of just evolved organically from there. Interestingly, Debbie, it was around 2015 when I put the free beta out there, I was working in a corporate job. So I just put it out there. And the first people that started like pounding on this thing, you know, 50 times a day were these people on keto. And I'm like, mm. dude, I don't even know what the heck keto is, but have at it. Honestly, I didn't even know what it was. I'd never heard of it before. Wow. But these people had my fitness pal connected and they were measuring their ketones and their glucose. And they're like, yeah. Hey Dave, this is the only app that I can put all these things in. I'm like, okay, great. Have fun. And then I'm like, oh, maybe I should try it. So then I tried it. And uh, that was the first time I'd ever learned how to eat with my blood sugar in mind as the ultimate goal. That's yeah. not something I'd ever been taught before. And that was really a transformational moment in my own health. And we kind of grew up in the, um, in the keto sphere. And, and now we have all kinds of different use cases on there. Hmm. Very interesting. Well, we are so excited to be able to share um, what you do with our community um, and Deborah Coke Coaching as a company to look at, you know, including this in what we do. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, very excited because as our information, like this year, our clients started using the Aura and the Keto Mojo. Beautiful. Um, we, yeah, we do use some body composition. Um, BO2, uh, the core, the car, the core products, um, cardio coach. So we do yeah. VO2 and RMR testing. And so just having, like I said, I just love the idea of having their personal dashboard and being able to look at the data would be cool. I can show it to you if we have time, if people, if you want to see visually, like, yeah, let's one do thing for me to ramble on about it, but like, yeah, let's, Marie can, uh, we do a screen share so that David can um, share for just a minute. I promise we'll end on time. Marie's yes. the, uh, the <laughs> yeah. Um, right. let's I have 87,000 tabs open right now. So let me close a few of those <laughs> just so that the zoom actually has a chance of working. Yeah. Let's not crash zoom here. Well, it just, it, it really 
crushes the performance when you screen share. Let me close a bunch of stuff here. How much time do we have? Just FYI, I want to be mindful of that. Um, we have five minutes till the next um, guest. Five minutes, Roger that. Hold on a second here. All right, my numbers are crap because I was just on a road trip. So just FYI. No judgment here. Yeah, so I got up pretty early this morning, as you can see, 3.20 in the morning. That's another story. But um, <laughs> here, here's my Aura data. And um, here's my VO2 max for my Apple Watch. And let's say I have a Keto Mojo. I have a Keto Mojo and a Dexcom, honestly. Okay. I have the Keto Mojo. And so we can measure glucose and ketones Oops, from the Keto Mojo. And you can see that if you were measuring body temperature, for example, you, you could put that on there. If that's not important to you, you can take it off. Here's, here's how you connect up all your stuff. So here's all the sources. We're always adding to this list. Uh, Apple Watch, Aura, Dexcom, Libre, Fitbit, Keto Mojo. Anytime there's a, a new piece of technology on the market, we'll add it in. And so you can see, like, you could have lots of people have different devices that measure the same thing. I also really love the, the, the BioStrap device too. So if I wanted mm. to measure that one, I could just switch it here. So we're not, we're, we're kind of device agnostic, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We don't prescribe any device. We kind of let the individual choose what they want to use. And then you can just customize your dashboard however you want it. If I wanted to have my ketones on the graph, for example, from Keto Mojo, I'm going to drop my ketones on. And then we, we give you some tools to run reports. So I gave that example earlier, like, okay, has my blood sugar actually gotten better or worse this year compared to last year? You know, that, that's a pretty simple query that people yeah. should be able to run. So what I'm going to do now is just go, I want to look at the blood sugar from my Keto Mojo here. And I want to look at my year-to-date readings. And I want to compare it to the prior year. Wow. So I'm down four and a half percent compared to last year. Great. Nice. So you want to make sure these numbers are moving in the right direction. So we, we give you some really easy ways to do that. Yes. And I'd be willing to bet that with a nice reduction in blood sugar, a lot of your blood results are going to get better too. And yeah. okay, I want to go to the lab and run my hemoglobin A1C and make sure my numbers got better. As you know, Debbie, you, you don't need a doctor anymore in the U.S. to run labs. Right. Uh, just go to um, any number of websites and order it yourself. Or mm -hmm. if your doctor will order it for you, great. But now I want to look at my A1C. Did that get better? So I'm just going to pull that up right here. And here's my hemoglobin A1C. And I'm at 4.9. And if I go back in my history of my life, you can see when I didn't know what the heck I was eating, I was a lot higher. Wow. Look at that. Wow. That's great. So this is like just kind of the uh, feedback loop that we want to provide for people. And um, that's why we exist in the world. Yeah, super. All right. Well, we want to thank you so much for taking time to share with our me. people. Yeah. And we're, we're going to make sure that we get this out to everyone. And then, like I said, we as a company are looking at adding something like this. So we appreciate it so much. Thank you.